Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cardiac Wire Show. My name is Jake Fishman. I'm the host of the show and the editor of the Cardiac Wire, and we have a great episode for you all today. We have Dr. James Earls from Clearly with us today, and we're going to be talking about Clearly's ischemia product and what is happening in that, that really exciting and important space of cardiovascular medicine and cardiovascular AI. Uh, Dr. Earls, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Jake. It's great to be here. It's great to have you. Maybe to start us off, if you can give uh, some background on yourself uh, and also clearly. Sure. Um, so I'm a, a radiologist uh, specialized in cardiovascular imaging. Uh, previously was uh, a vice chair of radiology at George Washington. Uh, when uh, Jin Min founded Clearly about uh, back in 2017, I, I came on early as a consultant and have been the chief medical officer for about three and a half years. Um, Clearly itself is a, in an AI company that has uh, specializes in uh, artificial intelligence analysis of coronary CT imaging. Our base product uh, looks at and quantifies uh, plaque and, and risk associated with plaque and stenosis. Uh, and then we have a new product, as you mentioned, uh, Clearly Ischemia, which uh, augments that uh, our first product to give a more complete suite so that we have plaque, stenosis, and ischemia uh, rolled into uh, one. Right. I can see how having those three um, available uh, as part of a single or package or uh, as part of a group of products can really be valuable for uh, cardiovascular clinicians and imagers. Um, maybe you can, we can dive a little bit deeper into the, the clearly ischemia product and just, you know, how it works, how it helps. Sure. So it's, it, it is a machine learning uh, product, just like our other uh, product. What it does is, uh, after we've analyzed someone's uh, uh, coronary arteries for the presence of plaque and stenosis, uh, it takes all of the quantitative data from the initial analysis. It's actually 37 different uh, data points on each vessel. Uh, it uses a machine learned algorithm that's based on a, it uses a random forest technique trained on a large database of patients who had a CT and then also had an invasive FFR. Uh, so the algorithm is trained to predict uh, the likelihood of an invasive FFR, either a positive one, which would be 0.8 or less uh, on the FFR value, or a negative one, which would be greater than 0.8. So it, it does give a binary output on a per-vessel basis, which is either positive for ischemia is likely or negative for ischemia is unlikely. And for patients who, or you know, clinicians who receive a, a positive report, uh, for their patient, what's the next steps after that? Yeah, so you know we try to uh, make it simple so that people who weren't necessarily specifically trained in it would understand what to do right away, right? So the the guidelines for use of uh, of ischemia testing in CT, uh, the ACC AHA chest pain guidelines have a cut point at, at point eight. They say you know if the patient's uh, FFR CT is greater than point eight, then they should go to medical management. Uh, if it's less than 0.8, they should go to intervention. So, um, you know, if, if physicians who have a, a, a positive study should consider, you know, uh, referring to interventional cardiology for intervention. Uh, patients who are negative typically can still just be medically managed. So it it sort of lines up with the guidelines in that binary methodology of medical management versus um, uh, intervention. Right. And I can see how, you know, the payers might be... Uh you know, really interested in fewer wasteful, um, uh, invasive, uh, procedures would then, and I understand that in cardiovascular AI, we're, we're seeing more, uh, reimbursements than maybe other parts of AI, um, for this ischemia product, what's the, the reimbursement environment for it? Yeah, actually it's very good. So the, uh, there was a level three CPT code that had been out there for several years uh, for the use uh, of FFRCT. And so that code uh, this year was elevated to a level one code. Uh, and the code language was specifically changed to include uh, other vendors of FFRCT, which now it would include us. Uh, so essentially we have full Medicare national coverage uh, for it and about 98% of commercial payers also uh, pay for it. So actually it, uh, it's a very good environment. Uh, you know, there are some requirements typically 
Um, I think Medicare uh, suggests that the patient should have a stenosis of between 40 and 90 percent in order to, uh, you know, qualify for coverage. Um, but uh, you know, some of the commercial payers have slightly different criteria. Right. Have you seen, um, you know, with the reimbursements that have happened in the past, maybe with you know other products that it clearly has, um, what? What's the, I guess, the uptake and how does that change as, um, as a, a product gains CPT1 uh, uh, reimbursements? Yeah, usually with a level one code, you you have national coverage. Medicare typically will will, will pay for it. And then, of course, things that Medicare cover, uh, most commercial in- insurances will, will, will eventually cover it. They may not cover it right away, but <clears throat> they will usually typically come up with coverage policy. So if you if you meet the level of evidence and uh, widespread clinical use to to get a level one CPT code, then typically the, a reimbursement comes with that. But I'm I'm not a reimbursement expert, but that's my understanding of that process. For the clearly ischemia product, how is it different uh, from what currently exists for uh, this clinical use case? Well, currently there's a number of non-invasive uh, uh, stress testing methods. You know, uh, stress nuclear. Uh, stress echocardiography, exercise treadmill, uh, PET imaging, as well as MRI. So it's a fairly, fairly large space. There's over 10 million tests that are done a year. But there is also an existing CT-based uh, modality uh, called FFRCT. Uh, FFRCT also is based on uh, analysis of uh, coronary CT images. Uh, but it, you, instead of using machine learning, it uses uh, computational fluid dynamics, which is a mathematical way of modeling blood flow in the vessels. Um, co- computational fluid dynamics has been around for a number of years. Uh, it does have some limitations. It makes some assumptions about uh, the system itself. Uh, so it is not able to measure all of the physiologic data that it needs from the CT scanner. Uh, so that may sometimes uh, limit its overall performance. Uh, but we, are, again, are machine learning based and don't have similar limitations or uh, uh, techniques as uh, with FFRCT. We talked about basically the widespread use uh, so far for clearly ischemia. Can you tell me more about how that's impacting care, uh, whether it's in the clinic now or in your clinical studies that you've done? Uh, yeah, well, we, we currently have about seven clinical trials that we've published using uh, clearly ischemia. Uh, and in those trials, I think there's probably between two and three thousand um, vessels or clinical patients that were evaluated, many of whom, you know, have a invasive FFR as a gold standard. So, our clinical validation of the algorithm has been very good. Uh, we do have some competitive, uh, you know, uh, performance data in those uh, uh, studies, looking at other commonly used ways of determining ischemia, such as, um, you know, nuclear stress testing. Um, a PET and as well as FFRCT. So we do uh, in the, that val- those validation studies, we give performance of our product compared to the gold standard, which is uh, invasive FFR. But also, how do we compare to these other more you know more commonly used um, imaging techniques? And so that's uh, we've been you know very pleased with the results of that so far. Right. As far as the um, I guess care decisions or or uh, outcomes that are happening as a result? Is Jeff any even anecdotal insights into how bringing AI into workflows is um, changing those? Yeah, you know, we have several uh, customers, some very large customers who, uh, you know, were trialing this as, as a, uh, before, uh, you know, we started to, uh, to sell it commercially after, of course, after it was FDA approved. Uh, we've had some very positive feedback on their experience. Uh, they feel that you know they, it, it does identify the right people to go to the cath lab. Uh, they don't have uh, perhaps many as uh, as many false positives as they have had in the past using other techniques. Uh, so we've had uh, fairly good adoption of our you know current of our prior our current clinical customers, and now of course uh, we have a lot uh, a number of new people who are interested. You know, a lot of it is also driven by the reimbursement piece. You know, when you have a a technique which is pretty much fully reimbursed. Uh, a lot more hospitals and uh, are and imaging centers are interested in talking about it. Uh, something uh, that has uh, an incomplete or, or you know developing reimbursement uh, is sometimes a more difficult conversations for uh, places to have. With this, you know, mounting evidence plus the um, I guess the, the financial incentives to to bring uh, ischemia AI or even 
other types of cardiovascular AI into um, into the clinic, there's probably a you know a growing list of of clinicians and groups who are are looking to do this for the first time or maybe just for the second time and they had some niche application uh, running before this. Do you have, based on the best practices that you've seen and the most successful clients you have, do you have any, you know, advice for folks who are just getting started with cardiovascular AI? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, it, it is a little bit of a shift of paradigm. I mean, some, sometimes there's a little bit of fear there. And, you know, with some clinicians are are very eager and they want to be early adopters and really fully embrace it. Other people step back a little bit, sort of want to see other people adopt it and see how they handle it. And then there's other people who really just want nothing to do with it and they want life to go on as it, as it always has. So, you know, uh, physicians go across the, the full spectrum of it. Um, I think the fear is, is something that uh, we can sort of dispel with, you know, all of these uh, AI algorithms to get approved by the FDA, they have to be efficacious and proven and safe, you know, for our patients. Um, you know, some physicians fear somehow they're going to be replaced by AI, which is also something that, uh, you know, in at least our discussions with the FDA, they make it pretty clear that, you know, there's always going to be a physician in the loop. They don't want raw AI data, you know, getting to another referring physician without a, a, an expert looking at uh, you know, the results and, and, you know, concurring or, you know, disagreeing with the results beforehand. And, you know, ultimately, I think what the effect is on us as physicians, either as radiologists or cardiologists, is it makes us uh, more efficient uh, and it makes us better. You know, it, it really does improve outcomes and and improve the efficacy of what we're doing. Um, and sometimes it actually saves us, you know, work too, so we can be both better and faster. So it really, is, I think there's not anything to be afraid of. Uh, I think it's something that is going to make medicine as a whole uh, better. And ultimately it's going to serve our patients better than we've done before. Better and faster. It seems like a uh, value proposition that, that a lot of uh, radiologists and cardiologists should be able to get behind, especially if it comes to the reimbursement. Well, absolutely. If you, if, you know, we, um, for our plaque product, you know, which is a little different than the ischemia products. So uh, a couple of years ago, we would talk to customers and they would be doing you know, two or three or four cardiac CTs a day. Um, but, you know, suddenly now, uh, after the 2021 chest pain guidelines came out that elevated cardiac CT to a level one uh, classification, a recommendation for both acute and uh, stable chest pain patients who are low to intermediate risk, uh, the number of CTs has really uh, gone up now annually year after year. Uh, so customers that were previously maybe not doing it at all or we're doing a handful of cases. Now we're talking to sites that are doing 10, 20. We even talked to a site recently that was doing 80 cardiac CTs a day. So suddenly they have this workflow issue with, you know, to do with a cardiac CT, um, you either have to have a 3D lab or technologist and or physician who interacts with the data and it can be a little bit laborious uh, can, and it can certainly take longer than other types of imaging tests to read. So. Uh, you know, us bringing some workflow efficiencies to them has really been uh, embraced this year. We hear it a lot. We hear people, they're almost more interested in the workflow efficiency than the additional data that we also give them about plaque volumes, et cetera. So, but, it, uh, you know, once people are used to using it, it certainly does, um, you know, add that efficiency and of course, uh, you know, helps them to actually read the studies a little bit uh, better, maybe less uh, into the reader variability. Uh, and then also give uh, additional data that they really hadn't been giving before, which is the amount of plaque that's present, which, which can then be helpful in determining medical therapy for the patient. So, uh, you know, the adoption process has been interesting, but uh, this year we've really, I think that uh, the, the efficiency uh, and throughput has really been something that we keep hearing consistently from our customers. Right. And, you know, I understand that you started uh, at least with clearly back in 2017, you've had a, a front row seat for this whole revolution going on. Um, so I, I really uh, appreciate you coming in and sharing, you know, your learnings from those years and seeing how this new uh, clearly ischemia product is is you know making this this new headway and expanded part of cardiovascular AI and helping clinicians work faster and you know more efficiently for themselves, but also for their patients and and. You know, helping to avoid unnecessary invasive procedures. Um, so it's really neat for the folks who are watching. 
Um, you know, if you're interested in finding ways to, to bring, you know, greater quality and efficiency into your own workflows, um, perhaps send fewer of your patients into unnecessary uh, cath lab procedures, check out the Clearly Ischemia product, um, reach out to, uh, to Dr. Earls and, and his team. Um, and uh, Dr. Earls, thank you so much for coming on. Oh yeah, no, it's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting us. We're more ha happy to you know talk about our products and services, and you know gain l a little broader audience. So we're very grateful for the invitation. Right back at you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>